So I thought web of life is very well explained by this song by Mana Hai in the uh, movie Mera Naam Joker by Raj Kapoor. It's a philosophy of life where performers from different parts of the world with a different creed, color and caste, they come together, they perform immaculately, uh, very smoothly and it is so pleasing to the eyes of the viewers and the show runs on. Whatever are the integral, different integral parts, the whole show comes out to be a very, very well orchestrated show and the, and the entertainment value is great. So life is almost like that. And uh, I go back to 21 years of age when I got commission. I was entrusted with the lives of 22 soldiers on the line of control between uh, India and Pakistan in Rajori and Kuch districts in Balakwood block. We were at the forwardmost post called 485 Alpha. And uh, all the actions, the professional acumen and the skills of the men put together, uh, they, that was well learned by them during training. But our camaraderie and monomy made it happen that we successfully defended that post. For me, overnight I grew from a boy to a man because the responsibility of 22 lives were entrusted to me. So I thought I must, based on the training that I have, theoretical training that I have got in the academy, I must build up on that and see practically how controlling and ambush is done on the line of control. When you are learning, you make mistakes. And there are people who forgive you for your mistakes. On one snowy evening, I was very keen to see how the troops were performing ambush, bang on the line of control. And I went with my uh, Sahaik and uh, we walked into the ambush. Normal orders are, uh, actually there are no orders for the ambush. The moment they see movement from the enemy side, they just fire. But since we had come from the hill side, from the other side, the boys hesitated and then I told them, uh, it is the colonel commander. And next day, a very seasoned junior commission officer, who is a senior JCO of our company, he politely told me, sir, as I come in, I push my names now. You must inform them if they are going to check them. So that was that day and I have never checked back on what my troops are doing because we had won each other's fame and our bonding of web of life had started. We also had uh, civilians back on the line of control. By the time they were at maximum uh, villages, uh, 16 villages out of, uh, out of 16 villages, 14 were in our territory. So, we had to interact with these siblings because our destinies were intertwined and we had to depend on each other to, be, to sustain our lives in a remote area. Twenty years down the line, from this time, uh, from 1977 to 1999, the uh, insurgency in JMK was at its peak. The situation was very tense. I re-established my relations with the local civilians. In 20 years, the boys who used to run around and play volleyball with us, they have now become responsible heads of the family and they were worried about the security and welfare of their families. So initially they were very hesitant to come up. But by and by, we built bridges again and that web that we had knitted with 22 people and some civilians, now I had, I had, I had 1200 people under me. So the web had grown and the task at hand was much more difficult than the first posting. Anyway, uh, fortune favors the brave. We applied ourselves and we neutralized 54 terrorists. But my orders to my troops were, whatsoever it takes, there will be no collateral damage. So not a single civilian was either taken uh, for interrogation or 
was uh, on. The blessing that we got, I do it, got the Chief of Army Staff's commendation card, uh, sorry, Chief of Army Staff's citation, based on which the unit was sent to South Sudan, one of the only battalions of the Indian Army, which has done two UN tenures. There were three very distinct things which are etched in the minds of the people living in that block, Balakpur block. The unit did for them. First of all, the previous unit had started an English medium school for them up to second standard. We took them up, we took up that uh, school up to fifth standard in three years and also got state recognition for that school. The second uh, thing that we did was because of the mines, the large number of mines have been laid over the years, the small children and even elders, while uh, taking the cattle out, they have made inside and outside, inside the mines and trying to take out their uh, cattle. They have had uh, mine accidents, they lost their limbs. So we had a medical camp for one week in which all these cases were given new uh, artificial limbs by the Chapel Foot uh, Association, which does it free of cost. The children who, uh, as destiny would have it, I returned there six years later as the brigade commander. And I got a hero's welcome because my unit had performed so well and we had not troubled the civilians unnecessarily. That was also very successful to know, but the web of life was increasing. And when I retired 20 years later, I mean, 77 I got commission, 2016 I retired. I was the Director General of uh, Operational Logistics and Strategic Movement. The entire movement, whether it is operational, training, or administrative, of the Indian Army, Indian Air Force, and the Indian Navy was done by my branch. Each, their dots, as we keep saying, their dots get connected. We played a game with the troops because uh, when it is snowing, nobody comes out, but you had to keep them uh, engaged. So there is a game in which one team takes a circle and the other team is inside that circle. And uh, this also, the dots also connected to make a complete team. It was actually an exercise in team building, which we, till today, we are in touch with the people who served together in 77. It's very important to be part of the team and see what are the team goals. Our individual goals will automatically be achieved if you are a good part of the team. And if everybody pulls, uh, you know, in, in, a, in hockey or football, if you don't pass, you can't convert it into a goal. So therefore, to achieve the team goal, each one has to be a very useful um, component of that team and your individual goals will automatically be met. They will always be, you will always be rewarded. But if you, as a commander, you want to really bring up your team, it has to be given to them, but responsibility remains yours. Anything going wrong, you are responsible. This is how you build the potential of uh, all your people and as a commanding officer I had one wish which was fulfilled by a lot. I said uh, I want every individual to get a prize from me for doing something or just being the face of the crowd in my command. In sending some mail and held every month, uh, fortunately I commanded for a long period, three months, uh, three years and three months and uh, 80 to 90 percent people either got awarded by me or they picked up the next promotion or they did some course of uh, um, instruction which helped them in their later career. Now there was a time when we go back, I was in school. Now we are in the process of uh, celebrating 75 years of independence. Way back in 71, we had a war with uh, our neighbor. And in 72, when I was in 10th standard, 
we were celebrating 25 years of independence. So that is the time, amongst other activities in school, we had an essay competition on United Nations contribution to world peace and upliftment of mankind. I prepared for that essay and I stood second. But in the process I fell in love with the United Nations. I always wanted to work there. At that point in time, I didn't know how to go about it. But I said, I continue working hard and I will wait for the opportunity. As a family tradition, I joined the Indian Army, as I mentioned earlier, after doing military school uh, child for five years in Chimla Hills. And through NDA, one got commission in, into the finest unit of the Indian Army, as I mentioned. But Peace, uh, or representing your country in the United Nations, had to wait for some time. But I thought one day my turn will come. So the floodgates for uh, human representation by our country opened up in 1989 when uh, the Iran-Iraq war came to an end. 40 of our batchmates, top college batchmates, they went abroad. But my turn did not come. When they looked around and discussed with people, after staff college, the top-notch students who had done better than the others were posted as brigade majors in brigade headquarters. So when we looked around, none of the brigade majors had been called. There was a man of one year of the brigade majors. And after that, one moved to the unit to earn the command reports. During that time also you are not disturbed, again a ban of two years. From there I went as on promotion as Lieutenant Colonel to the military operations. And there was a ban of one year on the MO uh, officers. So to cut the long story short, I waited for another 10 years when my turn came to go to the United Nations as a Colonel, as Chief Logistic Officer. Thanks to the training of the Indian Army and uh, the teaching of our parents and uh, teachers, uh, one performed very well there. The, there was a British force commander for six months. When he was leaving, he wrote a report. And he said, uh, Colonel Singha is uh, by far my best branch head and that also by a clear cut margin. And uh, he added, uh, it's none of my business, but if it was the British Army, the officer is ready to take on the next rank of Brigadier. That was a great review. Few years later, when I became a general, I was posted as GOC 11 in Ahmedabad. That's the time one went uh, the Prime Minister who was the Chief Minister then. He used to have interaction uh, at least twice a month. And, uh, one of the Parsi friends, he called me over for dinner and there was a surprise guest there, Vedan Daruwala, the famous astrologer was also at home. So he started talking to me and he said, uh, Jan Saab, you will be uh, world renowned in the coming years. <laughs> I said, sir, that sounds like a joke because uh, although I share my birthday with uh, Kapil Dev and uh, the cricketer and also A.R. Man, the music maestro, but uh, I have no such skills that will take me to that level. He just smiled and that was it. <coughs> a few days later, my force commander uh, from the previous mission, who had since retired, also came down and he says, where are you going uh, from here? I said, sir, I am very happy to that command and uh, I have an open mind wherever they send me. He said, you must go to the UN. Thanks to uh, both of them, out of the 350 serving generals, I was selected by the system on uh, deep selection and uh, to represent India in an interview for head of the mission post commander at uh, Golan High Hospital in Syria and Israel. So I had to compete with five other nationalities that's the time I realized, you know, 
you can you do have failures in life, which is a stepping stone to victory. But I said failure here is not an option. You have been selected by your army to represent the nation, and you cannot let down the nation. And we were in training, or we were not in the confinement, but there I worked very hard. And uh, the interview, of course, went off very well. It was a little longer, but they said they were very impressed. And eventually, I found myself heading for Syria, but everybody else was leaving Syria. So nobody was envious of me. But they said, do your best, and whenever you have to wind up the uh, operation, uh, mission, tell us, we'll wind it up. We stayed there for the next three years. I got one extension after the other. Both Syrians and Israelis, they wanted me to continue. The buffer zone that we had, 10 kilometers buffer zone, was uh, only meant for the UN troops and no other people from either side, armed people, were not allowed to come in. But the Syrian opposition groups, they found, uh, armed opposition groups found this to be the most safest place in Syria. So 30 of them came inside a buffer zone. They were followed by the Syrian Arab armed forces and they would engage each other. In between crossfire, in the crossfire, we were the UN peacekeepers of court. We continued to operate and eventually I shifted the entire mission onto the other side. But I must tell you that out of the six nationalities who had given their troops there, and some of them for last four decades, five of them pulled out. Only India remained there. We were able to uh, continue with the mission and eventually when it became very dangerous, uh, that time we shifted the entire mission from the Syrian side to the Israeli side. This is the one of the talks in the UN headquarters, initial photograph with the Secretary General. Now, any leader who wants to succeed must have the propensity to take risks. Without risks, you can't achieve anything. Montgomery always used overwhelming troops. Whereas uh, another general in the war, both I mean, Americans as well as Germans, they would go for just a handful of troops and achieve uh, better results. So it is not necessary that you will always get all the resources that you need, whether it's war or peace, or whatever task you are given. You have to do with what we have. General Ben Malik in uh, Kargil said, we'll fight with what we have. And we threw the infiltrators and Pakistan army out. This is an interesting photograph. The person with binoculars is a Pakistani general who was the military advisor to the United Nations. And uh, he was four years my junior, but uh, um, he had already commanded a corps in his army and he was secretary to the UN. Always respected me and when he came to the mission, uh, he hugged me as if we had long lost brothers. And I showed him wrong. I said, this is a challenging position. So he was very, very impressed with it. We need to be proactive and positive in our lives. In everything that we do. Without that, uh, you cannot succeed. So therefore, all the negativity that comes from some people is best avoided by not being in their company. You cannot select your family. Your family is given to you. But you can always select your friends. So be smart enough to have the right kind of people around you. This is addressing the security council uh, about the situation in uh, Syria. And uh, we in the break we are talking about perfection. Everybody strives for perfection. Some of us are more, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, serious about it. But who doesn't like perfection? So I think you should put in all your efforts to achieve perfection. But I would say strive for it, but don't die for it. There would be 80 percent. For 85% results, if you get, you should be happy with it. 
I'm not talking about the percentages these days. In schools and all where it is 100% is the only result. 